Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this second part of this tutorial, we will be focusing on uh, making features or adding in functions that allow us to uh, refine our low poly image here. Because right now it's very rough and you can't really see anything unless you increase the mesh uh, size. But increasing the mesh size will well make the image more uh, refined which sort of defeats the purpose of a low poly. So what we're going to do is going to create some features in it that allow us to refine only the parts where it's necessary, like the eyes, the lips, uh, the face lines, etc, etc. So what we're going to do that is, uh, as you can see, I've created a, a layer called background. What we're going to do with that is we're going to import our image in here so that we can use it as an overlay or an underlay to uh, draw our refining features. Um, I, what you can do is, I think I've already done that, yeah. So I've baked this curve into this layer uh, so that it becomes easier for us to import our picture. So if you go to Rhino, you type in the command in picture, you will get a window, mine's on the other screen, which allows you to select an image. So I will go ahead and select the same base image. Click that. If you have O snap on, it becomes very easy. Snap from one corner to the other. If not, uh, turn it on and then use these two snaps. So we have that imported in. So if we disable our preview, we can see our image. Um, the next thing we want to do is create a few more layers. We'll call this one. Um, and then we activate that. What we're going to do in this layer is we're going to draw using polyline. Oh, we're going to draw using polylines uh, where we want the defining features to be. So, for example, the eyes. Uh, we're going to go in, zoom all the way in as far as we can, and then draw, just roughly follow the eye lines. Don't have to be exact, but uh, being exact doesn't hurt as much. Uh, I think now it's quite hard to see. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna probably make this a bit white-ish. There we go. So I think the eyes will be like this. And then what I tend to do is for uh, for a portrait, especially when it comes to the eyes, I will draw this shape, so like a sideways chevron. In order to force the component to mesh with this outline in it, and then we can actually, mm, I might consider doing a line here, but we'll see how it goes. Let's do the other eye first before we move on to other stuff. When you draw um, these outlines, try to remain inside the boundary line. That you see, so I think this eye should be oh crap, it should be like that sort of. Uh, just let me join these two curves real quick, and then oh, we can actually lock the background so we don't accidentally select it. Let's create this here and this here, and then we do the eye brows uh, like that. Actually, let's do this line here like that. And then here we also need to do this and like that. <laughs> Looks silly. <laughs> All right, uh, with that in mind, let's move on to the nose. Now for the nose, what I tend to do is I draw sort of like a, a dividing line uh, so that the computer will recognize that and then give your nose a bit more um, depth, if that makes sense. So we can, hmm, this becomes a bit tricky to do. Let's see, so we can up in this, like that. Uh, this nostril is kind of dominant. We might want to include that in, so just going to draw a line like that. <clears throat> okay, now let's move on to the lips. Mm, 
let's do the lower lip like this. When drawing features like this, uh, what I advise is try to keep some sort of like symmetry in the amount of points that you draw in it. Unless you really can't do it, like the face is really, really sideways, uh, then you can't draw a symmetry, obviously. But in here, we try to keep the symmetry um, as best as we can. So I can use the middle and this the other ones like that. And then top lip, uh, let's see. Symmetry here is is gonna be difficult. <laughs> uh, I think like here. Try to remain within the color that you want to keep, so that uh, you are making sure that whatever color the meshing will uh, will pick up, the image sampler will pick up, will always be within the color that you want it to be. So if I draw this like a bit further out, uh, the chances are it might pick up on the skin color instead of the uh, red ish color of the lips so just keep an eye out for that um, a good thing for the teeth is what i tend to do if the teeth is really dominant uh, what you can do is draw a straight line that sort of matches the division uh, between the teeth the space between the teeth what that will do is it will force the mashing to recognize this and mash accordingly and you can see uh, real division lines in your teeth later on. So we have that set. Um, I think we might need that. Uh, actually, let's see how it works. Uh, the way we can reference it back to Grasshopper is there's a component called Pipeline. Uh, this one, it's found here. And what this component does is you can input a name of a layer and it will reference, it will look into that layer in real time to see what's, what geometry is in it. And we can select what geometry it can see with uh, these four filters. So we have curves, so obviously we need that. This is point, curve, B wraps, and meshes. So once we have that, you can see that it turns green, meaning we have selected it. And we can input that into the curve of the millipede component. And now we can turn it off. Uh, let's enable our mesh. Now, well, at least the eyes, it looks a bit freaky actually. At least the eyes are in it. So what that means is we need to go back in and dial. I think we might need to increase this or yeah, decrease this to like 30. See how that works. That looks a lot better, except her teeth is a bit weird in her eyes. So I'm going to go ahead, back in it and fix that real quick. Yeah, so it's picking one of these dark colors. Okay, so a different way we can do this is mm, we might want to add a secondary line to her teeth just to make sure that the uh, component is picking up her teeth and not... <laughs> like making the the separation as best as it can. So I think this will help. Oh, I need to move this to this. There we go. Now it's going to wait a little bit because it's going to actually remesh that. But that's, uh, that's looking a lot better already. Uh, the only thing we can fix is her around her eyes, especially those, because that uh, rectangle, that triangle you see here, is picking its color from that point. And that point happens to be the darker areas of her eyes. So what we can do is we can either draw a line in here. So like uh, we need to be on the right. We're going to draw this line. And mm, I guess we can draw one here too. Let's see how that works. Uh, I would say a lot better, <laughs> definitely a lot better. Uh, her eyes is all black, so we can fix, oh, it's, hmm. yeah, I, that would be nice to have that color in it, but let's see. The other way we can do this is by introducing points, because the millipede component also takes a point when it uh, meshes whatever surface you input it. 
So what we can do is create another layer, we call it points, select that. So let's draw some point in Rhino. Um, let's draw one there. Let's copy it just so it's easier to distribute. So if I have this point here, meaning the um, the component will probably take that to here to here and then this to here. They might take the white. We'll see how it goes. This one will be a bit difficult. So I might select this, 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 this. We're going to make a new pipeline geometry. And this time we select points. Connect points to points. We can hide that. We enable the meshing. It stands somewhere off where you can see it more clearly. That one starts to pick up the white, but this one still doesn't. So what that means is actually let's do this. Enable meshing. Um, So it seems that we can actually move this bit right there you know, to pick up some white-ish in her eyes. Or we can actually just go into the features and then draw a small rectangle. I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, the points is having trouble. Well, actually... I might be able to draw a rectangle instead. How does this look actually? If I get that off, get that. Yeah, it looks weird. Okay. So let's get rid of that. But actually, from here, from a, a, a further down, it looks okay because we make sure that we include the whites. Uh, in the corner of her eyes, so that should be okay. The only thing we're looking weird is her face. So let's fix that instead, and we can go here define. Remember to stay a little bit inside the color that you want to keep. So about symmetry should be around. Oh damn, her hair's in the way. Okay. Yeah, this is a lot better. This is a lot better. Uh, that part can remain a bit diffused. That's fine. Okay. Um, so this is how we can input our, uh, give our input to the meshing component, just so guide, uh, just so we can guide it to make a better output for us. With that said, I think I should leave it in here. Oh, there's something we can still fix over there. I'm going to do it points for this, actually. So we're going to copy that point. Uh, we're going to paste three over there. There we go. You can take that off. If you want, you can actually fix that brown color, too. And maybe fix that one. We might have to end up like drawing a few more points around the eyes just to be able to fix that part. Why is it still brown? Oh, because it's breaking. Okay, I see. But that's fine. Just looks more natural then. All right. Um, we'll stop in, at this point. And in the next part, what we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, create a different feature. We're gonna sort of give us the option to separate our subject from the background, so that you don't, so that you have a very uh, defining line that will separate our object, which could make it pop a bit more. But that depends on the image you're trying to turn into low poly. So that's what we're gonna be exploring in the next video. I'm um, going to end it here, so what I advise you to do is take the script and input maybe a different picture or try to understand 
component by component why they're there and what function are they uh, yeah so what what function they have and try to understand their role in the whole script so yep I'll leave that to you until then until the next one have a good one